She is the co-founder of GiveSendGo.com, and we wanted to talk to her about what has been going on in her industry and what is happening with her and this money for the truckers in Canada. Welcome, Heather. Thanks so much for being on the program. Hi, Glenn. Thanks for having me. You bet. I, I have to tell you, I have raised my last dime uh, for anyone who is using uh, really anything but Give, Send, Go. If you are using GoFundMe, do not expect me to help. They take a lot, a big portion of everything that is raised, and they're not the only game in town, and they have revealed themselves for who they are. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and you might know better, this is the f- the fifth time GoFundMe has shut down. The Freedom Convoy, Kyle Rittenhouse, the conservative students that were harassed on TikTok, the anti-vaccine mandate lawsuit, and an anti-mask campaign. These are all just in the last few years. Uh, they're not getting a dime of my money. Yeah. And there's been way more than that. We see, have seen over the last year and a half dozens of people coming on saying, I was removed from GoFundMe. I wasn't able to get my money. They shut me down. They didn't like, you know, uh, the police officers in the Brianna Taylor case. Just all the political events that have happened. If you weren't on the side of mainstream media, you were not allowed to fundraise for it. So yesterday, well, let's start at the beginning. When did you get involved in, um, when did the when did adopt a trucker start and the freedom convoy 2022 begin on your site so i would say that the adopted truckers came a couple weeks ago they were there prior to the trucker convoy 2022 uh, and uh their friends the, the two people that are campaigns are like they know each other and so when the trucker convoy 2022 came on and started using gofundme and the adopted trucker people were like, hey, we're getting our money. Like, we've already received money that's been donated like, into our bank account. Everybody was in an uproar. Why are you using GoFundMe? They have a track record of shutting down campaigns that they don't believe in politically. And so, um, so that started the whole thing. And then GoFundMe started to make some moves that just shot themselves in the foot. So when you heard yesterday the premier of Ottawa, uh, like our one of our governors, uh, and the courts. I mean, this is this is a threat to you. Um, the Ontario government won a court order blocking the use of any and all monetary donations made through Freedom Convoy 2022 and op- adopt a trucker on the Give Send Go online fl- fundraising platform. Um, they say it binds you. You cannot give it to them. But what do you say back? Well, that, you know, we're speaking with our, our legal team, and Canada does not have authority in a U.S.-based business. We do not have to bow to their whims. They can do whatever they want up there, and we don't have to, unless they come and get an order in the United States, we don't have to agree or even speak to it. We say, no, you can't stop us. These campaigns are so active, raising money, and we're looking for ways to legally be able to move this money to people, the, the people on the ground that are just protesting mandates, that are saying we need to be able to have some freedom here. It's mainly peaceful. If you look at anything besides uh, mainstream, it's a, a peaceful protest of people saying we just want our voices heard. And the Canadian government is now block- saying they're blocking those two campaigns. They're not shut down. Money is being- still being raised. We are committed to getting the money where it needs to be. And we're looking at lots of different options to do that right now. But just as an FYI, only those two campaigns were, were blocked. So, you know, if somebody wanted to go on and create a campaign and then another campaign, they would be wrapped up having to try to block one after another until they decide, well, they're just not going to allow Gibbs and Go in Canada, and that would be absolutely insane. So uh, you now have people, I mean, serious people, saying that you need, your organization needs to be uh, listed as a terrorist entity. It makes me kind of chuckle because we've, we've come to a place in society where we like to redefine words. And we define words. And so 
you know, this started back, we, we started Gibson Go seven years ago as a place that we said, you know, look at GoFundMe. People are raising money. It's great. People coming together to, to solve a need. But as Christians, we said, no, we want to provide a platform where people can raise money to solve that physical need. But we understand there's a hope that money can't solve. And we want to also inject that into people's situations. And so we started this um, just as a place for people to share, for us to share hope with people. We arrive on the scene a, a year and a half ago. Well, we've been on the scene, but a year and a half ago, we get thrust into the political spotlight for allowing Kyle Ritten out. From then on, we've been called every name in the book, from terrorists to white supremacists. People don't know anything about me or my family or my co-founder, Jacob, who's my brother. We don't know who we are, what we, you know, what our families are like. To call us all these names and try to paint a broad stroke, it's ridiculous. And the more insults they throw, it shows two colors. Because, you know, I can't be all of these things. And anybody who knows me knows I'm not. And so we're not promoting terror. We're promoting freedom. This is a campaign that is standing for freedom. And you know what? If someone was standing against this and they wanted to raise funds on Give Go, we would allow it to because we have committed to remain neutral in this. You don't have to know what I think about the truckers. It matter. These texts should not be the person who decides who can raise money or not. That's just absolutely insane. Uh, however, uh, I mean, it is becoming more and more um, the case with businesses. And, you know, I've said for a long time, there needs to be a parallel. You got to spit yourself out of the system. It needs to be a parallel economy. Uh, and you have done that. You saw the opportunity. And, uh, and years ago, you started Give, Send, Go. And one of the reasons why is because GoFundMe takes so much profit, takes so much uh, away from the funds, is that right? And how are you different? Okay, so when we first started and we came on the scene, we said, okay, let's be a little cheaper than GoFundMe's pro- uh, rates. Everybody has a proxy online, you can't get around that. So 2.9 plus 30 cents is standard processing. Um, GoFundMe was charging about 5% on top of that as a platform fee. We came in a little under, and very quickly, we really felt like the Lord did have become a free platform and trust him. But this was his I can't understand. I, you, you, uh, we need to get you a better phone. Uh, maybe I'll start a give, send, go for you to have a better phone. So <laughs> you're hard to understand. Um, can you repeat the, what you just said? Sure. Uh, my brain, uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, not really. But, uh, try it one more time. All right. Can you hear me now? Okay, well, a little better. Uh, this is horrible. Um, are you in like Africa or the moon? Or? <laughs> I am in a I am in a different country, actually. Oh, you are okay. Business, so, All right. Yeah. So, um, but so I'm trying to remember the question. The the question was uh, what makes you different on oh yeah percentages. Yeah. So we became a free platform saying that we were going to just trust God that he gave us his business idea and that we were going to walk that on the stage. And so we knew that people coming on our platform needed the money. They're raising money for medical bills and mission trips and right. all sorts of things that they needed. And we said, it's silly for us to be taking money from the person who needs the money. When the givers come on, let's give them the option, if they have a little extra money, to donate, to give them go to help keep us free. And so we switched to that model. And it started working, and we could see that it was what needed to happen. It was it made the most sense. And since then, GoFundMe has changed to the same model. Mm. Mm. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much. I, I have a feeling uh, that you are going to be hearing from the federal government uh, soon, Heather. Are you prepared to withstand the heat that you are going to get from the federal government? What we keep saying to ourselves is that you know, this whole year, actually, for our team, we say God is faithful, and he's faithful today. It's not just when we look back and see what he did through us. And so we believe that we're in a fight that God has ordained us to be in, that he started us seven years ago to arrive on the team and be in this fight today. And so we're just trusting him, asking. When people ask what we need, we say we need wisdom. Pray for wisdom for us, because we are going to walk this out to the full extent that we need to. Because we believe that freedom, both spiritually and physically, came at such a high cost that we're not going to sit back and just throw it away. 
absolutely not. I don't care how many hate emails, how many DDoS attacks. We're in here for the long haul. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how this is going to play out. We just know that we're going to take it step by step. Standing for freedom, even when people don't like it. And and you are being, you are attacked. I mean, your servers are being attacked all the time this week. Do you know who's behind oh, that? You know, we, we had seen some names float by and things like that that we're looking into. The bottom line is, is that, you know, we, this campaign launched and immediately our site pretty much went down. It seemed like there was error pages for everybody. We're getting so many emails of people going, I can't get on. And we said, well, half the world is trying to take us down. We had over like 8. like 2 million DDoS attacks that first 24 hours. Jeez. And half the world is trying to donate. So everybody's on Give, Go, Go, half taking us down, half trying to donate. And we were like, what the heck, our site's down. We brought in some big, big guns to help us, um, you know, fortify the site. And the next day, and I'd like to say when I woke up the next day, but there was no sleeping involved. The next morning, we looked at how much this campaign had processed despite being down. Like, I literally could not get to the site and get it to function the way I needed it to. There had been over $2 million raised. This is a miracle. There is no way that a site that can't stay up could raise and process $2 million. And yet it did. And it's once again a sign that we are doing the right thing. I love your spirit. I love the fact that your your one of them is not going to sit down. Heather, anything you need, uh, you just let me know. We'll we'll be there for you. And every fundraiser we do now, where we need somebody like you, we are going to go, route it through Give Send Go. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You bet. God bless.